Hey Access Hollywood, I'm Madison De La Garza. Thank you so much for coming and getting ready with me. I actually started doing makeup when I was about 10 years old. Um, obviously not to go and wear out on the street, but I have always been super, super passionate about makeup, so I started watching tutorials at a really, really young age. But I always grew up watching the other women on the show get their makeup done, and I was always fascinated and super, super jealous that they got to get these full makeup looks, and I would just sit there and watch like in awe. I was obsessed with Eva Longoria. I wanted to be, I still wanna be her. She was like seriously like a second mom to me. I can't even explain the ways that she was there for me and, and for my family, my whole family, my sister, too. We even spent Easter together one year. She invited me over to her place. We colored eggs, she cooked dinner, I met her whole family, so we were super, super tight. We do need a Desperate Housewives reunion. I think about it all the time. People always ask me, would you do a Desperate Housewives reunion? And I always say, if they called me up and told me to get in hair and makeup at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, I would be like, I'm there, cool, dope, give me the address. Tell me where I need to be and I will be there because it's something that I've really honestly dreamt about the past couple years. Are you and Demi matching or anything? I actually don't know what Demi is gonna be wearing. It's gonna be, she doesn't know what I'm wearing and I don't know what she's okay. wearing, so it's gonna be, <laughs> we're surprising each other. You've also look, looked at her for like beauty and fashion inspo too. Oh, definitely, yeah. I've always been a fan of Demi's look, especially growing up. She, I don't wanna say goth, but definitely had more of a punk rock kind of vibe, which is another reason I was inspired to get so many tattoos. I used to draw on myself all the time. <laughs> all the time. Did you use her for advice and stuff or go to her artist? I did actually. She was with me when I got my very first tattoo and we haven't gone together since then, but I'm really thinking about planning a sister tattoo for the three of us. Okay, what do you wanna get? I'm thinking it's gotta be like a symbol of something. I mean, I don't know if I wanna like go for initials. Demi does have all of our birthdays tattooed right here on her rib cage. Oh, so awesome. I'm gonna have to think of something other than birthdays. So when I found out that Demi was doing the song for Scream, my first question was, when is the premiere and can I go? Because, and I don't usually ask to tag along for things, but I'm such a huge Scream fan and I have been ever since I was like 12 or 13. So I thought if there's any event that I need to ask to be a part of, it's definitely this one. So I flew all the way here and I'm now I'm here and I'm so excited. Tell me about this look tonight. How, what, break it down for me. So I'm going to be wearing a blue gown, which is very different for me. I haven't worn a really pretty nice gown really ever. Um, and I, I said that this is wearing this dress is gonna be the quince experience that I never got because I had a sweet 16 instead. So I'm wearing the long blue gown because blue is my color. And I'm also wearing a blue fur coat as well, which is so different for me. And I'm gonna do a little off the shoulder moment, you know, kind of drape it on my shoulders and just feel like a princess. <laughs> you said before your family has been through a lot. How do you guys come together in good times and bad? We are huge, huge fans of therapy. Um, we're huge therapy advocates. We always have been. Um, and we really try to put mental health first. Mm. That's a big one. Um, being accepting and understanding of others uh, boundaries and being there for when we need each other. You know, we're always just one phone call away, really prioritizing those bonding experiences. That's really important as well. You shared on TikTok that you are sober. Congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I know a lot of people were curious, like what you decided to quit. Do you mm -hmm. mind sharing? Yeah, of course. Um, so I, my main thing, um, and what I, what I really want to talk about the most is um, the effects that marijuana can have on someone and their personality and their life. Um, a lot of people may think it's not so serious, but for me it was. Mm -hmm. It was a huge issue um, for quite a few years. And ever since quitting, ever since I stopped smoking, um, everything, I feel lighter. Um, colors are actually a lot brighter. The world just seems a lot um, more 
free and, I, and I've gotten these opportunities that I never thought that I would have had. I mean, I would have been so terrified to fly to New York because I would have been tied down and worrying about a substance. And living free from a substance that you thought you could have never put down is the most liberating experience. And I can't stress enough how important it has for me to quit. I'm so glad you're saying this and, sh and bravely sharing it because it is really hard to be vulnerable in that way. Right. Because I really do think a lot of people don't see it as harmful. Right. Um, and surely for some people it might not be. Exactly. But it can lead to affecting your life negatively. Right. So I'm really happy you shared that. Did you talk to your parents and your sisters before sharing it? Were you like, I don't know if I want to, because Demi's been so open about her struggles. Right. And ha it's helped so many people. So did that kind of inspire you? Absolutely, yeah. I don't think, I think if Demi hadn't been so open and honest about her struggles, I don't think I would have been. Um, it can be really intimidating, especially feeling like this is what you're gonna be known for now. Um, and feeling like the whole world is watching you and if you slip up and make a mistake, the whole world's gonna know. And um, I think, you know, I think that that is a part of recovery and I think being so open and honest about it keeps you accountable, which is so, so important in recovery is holding yourself accountable and just kind of letting the world know, hey, this is what I'm struggling with. Um, I would love it if you didn't put it in front of me. Um, and if you do, you know what, like that's, um, that's when you get to test out your wings. Mm. Like I got to do this weekend flying here um, was a huge, huge deal for me because I haven't flown alone without the help of a substance that I was dependent on. So this has been a huge challenge and I did it and I'm here and I'm incredibly proud of myself. We talked a little bit about it before, but you were, how old were you when you were cast in Desperate Housewives? I was only six and a half when I was cast in Desperate Housewives. I was a little baby. I cannot believe you were that. You were so freaking cute. <laughs> You're <laughs> still cute, but you were so, so cute as that little girl. I loved it. Um, and you talked about you loved being on that set. I did. I did. So yeah, being on Desperate Housewives felt more like being raised by a whole village of people than it did feel like working. Mm -hmm. um, I was very, very lucky to have the same crew around me for four years. And those, you know, age six to 10 is a super, super important time in a child's life. Mm -hmm. So being surrounded by people that cared, um, people that wanted to see me happy, people that wanted to make me laugh and wanted to make me smile, you know? Yeah. Um, I was very, very, very blessed. I would love to hear about what you're working on now. You have a new movie, Surprise. You shot it on Zoom. Yeah. Tell me how you came together with like other TikTok creators. You're a big TikToker. Yeah. So Surprise is kind of the first film of its kind. Our producer and writer, Max Marlowe, he, I always tell him that he's an absolute rock star. He was the one who brought all of us together. We have cast members in LA, but we also have a cast member in South Africa, the Philippines, and Canada. So this film kind of took place all around the world, which I think is really, really, really special. And thankfully, they were all really on board to join the project and, um, they were absolute troopers the way that some of them had to film at four o'clock in the morning and some because of time zones and everything. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited for it to come out. It's the first thing that I've ever directed that is anything like this, you know, directing a project over Zoom had very unique challenges. We had delays, we had obviously the different time zones, we had um, issues with audio and things like that, but you're not there to fix it with your own hands. So I had to relinquish a lot of that control to the actors themselves, which was very, very overwhelming and very intimidating, but they killed it. They yeah. did a, a fantastic job.